You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Yesterday on the show, we did talk very briefly about some fella from Notre Dame who was on Crane and Company uh, who kind of took a shot at Brian Kelly, and I just kind of brushed it aside. Uh, and his name is Brian Driscoll. He's from something called Irish Breakdown. I'm sure he's a great guy, but whatever. Um, it, and I, I'm only revisiting this because I, I probably spent 60 seconds on it and brushed it aside, but subsequently after the show yesterday... I had plenty of people text me asking me my thoughts on it, emailing me, uh, asking me on Twitter. We talked about it on Scone and Tea, then today on Morning Scone. And I'm like, I talked about this yesterday, but I, I, I feel like I need to be a little more emphatic so you know exactly my point on all of this. If you missed it, real quick, um, David Cohn from Crane & Company, all these guys, they're friends of ours. Uh, David, who played quarterback at Michigan, by the way, Asked the question of Brian Driscoll from Irish Breakdown if Brian Kelly will win a national championship during his time at LSU. Here was the interaction. Brian Kelly, the winningest coach in Notre Dame history. He goes to Louisiana State. The last three head coaches for LSU have won national titles. Will Brian Kelly win a national championship at LSU? No, he won't. He won't, he won't recruit the way he needs to recruit. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's the coach he was at Grand Valley, the coach he was at Cincinnati. I think that guy is gone. Uh, I think he is just, to me, just, I mean, look, Notre Dame wasn't lacking talent. Notre Dame lacked big game production because Brian Kelly just didn't get those teams ready to play in big games. And I don't think that all of a sudden miraculously changes because he's now in Baton Rouge. You know what I mean? I think Notre Dame fit more of his personality. It fit his recruiting base. I mean, the most Southern place he'd ever coached before Notre Dame was Cincinnati. You know, <laughs> Notre Dame's the second most Southern place he's ever coached. So I, I just, I don't see the fit, to be honest with you. And you know, say that sour grapes or the case may be, but honestly, guys, I was ready for Brian Kelly to be done 2020 because I, I feel he had taken the program as far as he could, and I don't I don't see him cleaning up that dumpster fire at LSU anytime soon. Okay, I, I went through some of this when Brian Kelly was hired. I'll do it again because I feel like I've had to repeat this so many times, and with the season a little more than a week away, I'll do this for what I hope is the very last time that Brian Kelly is the coach at Notre Dame. Uh, the guy, Brian Driscoll, first of all, God bless him, you can't be more contradictory than when you say he won't recruit, Brian Kelly won't recruit at the level he needs to in one breath, and then in the next breath saying talent wasn't the problem at Notre Dame, it was lack of big game production. Well, who recruited the talent, Jack Legg? I, I clearly, he w had what you thought was enough talent to win, but didn't have big game production. The problem with Notre Dame, and this is not a Brian Kelly problem, okay, I'll circle back to Kelly in a second. First of all, the problem with Notre Dame was not Brian Kelly. The problem with Notre Dame is Notre Dame. And, and I'm saying this for the benefit of any LSU fan who may have some lingering doubt or questioning the, the legitimacy of the pushback from, from Notre Dame. And you've got to understand the mindset of people associated with Notre Dame. And this is not coming from someone who is sitting in the South, SEC-centric, who can't see the forest through the trees. I've told you this before. My freshman year of college, I went to Holy Cross. It's run by the same priests that run Notre Dame. It's literally across the street. Yes, it's the place where Rudy went. I was trying to transfer into Notre Dame. It's the place where I wanted to go. My brother went there. He's got two degrees. I lived there. We had so much synergies with the campus. My, my student ID card allowed me access to a lot. I had student tickets to Notre Dame football games. I went to all of them. I was able to work out at the Rock, which is the Rockney Center, which is the student you know rec center, essentially. Um, you could eat in the dining halls. You could check out books at the Hesburgh, which is the library where Touchdown Jesus is. Y'all, I was on Notre Dame's campus every day. I, li I lived that life for a year, and I hated it. And so I came home, and it's the best decision I ever made. I, I did really well in school, was able to get into manship at LSU, got to pick my classes because I had a 4-0. It, it was great. It was, a, it was a great decision for me to come to LSU. And I'm telling you, I got to experience that culture day in and day out for an entire year. And, the, and Notre Dame is a wonderful place, y'all. It really is. It's a beautiful campus. It's got tremendous history. It's a, a pristine academic reputation. Um, it, is, it is very elite. All of that stuff. And, and it, is, it is right for so many people. Here's the problem Notre Dame has. Okay, And this is not a Brian Kelly problem. This is what Brian Kelly was fighting against while he was there. If you are an athlete at Notre Dame, 
you live in the general student campus dorms. It's a stu- It's a campus of 8,000 in the middle of a crappy town in northwest Indiana. You know, I, we had a steak and shake there when I was there, and it was the highlight whenever someone who had a car could drive to the steak and shake. Most every meal is eaten on campus. You live in the same dorm for four years, which is kind of like your fraternity. Dorms have mascots and colors, and you do the, the basketball tournament, and, and the dorms sit together at football games. It's You have to be so willing to be part of that culture. Student athletes don't have student dorm or athletic dorms. They're, you could be the number one recruit in the country, and you could show up on campus the first day, and you could be rooming with a uh, an econ major from uh, from San Mateo. It's it's just a very different place. There's also not a lick of talent in the state of Indiana. When Brian Kelly wanted to see an elite prospect, he had to get on a plane and go fly to see him. Last year, his class of 25. Uh, signees at Notre Dame represented, I think, 19 states. It's incredible. You got to crisscross the country to go see talent. Brian Kelly or any coach at LSU, you want to go see a five star receiver, drive five minutes from LSU to Catholic High and go see Shelton Sampson. You want to see your quarterback commit for this year's class, drive 20 minutes to Woodlawn and go see Ricky Collins. You want to see your four star running back, go 10 minutes down Perkins and go to, to Liberty Magnet. You want to see a high four-star safety? Go 15 minutes north to Zachary. You want to see the best offensive lineman in the state? Maybe you have to hop on a plane for a 20-minute jet ride to go up and see the Lance Hurd at Neville. Do you understand the point? The advantages LSU has is in the dirt. The advantage LSU has is in the recruiting base in the state. And I've said this so many times now, I don't even know how to say it any other way. LSU, Georgia, Ohio State, the only three Power 5 schools in talent-rich states. Every other Power Five has another Power Five in its state pulling away talent. LSU doesn't have that. The pick of the litter. Nick Saban put the fence around the state and showed every coach subsequently how to do it and made LSU a place kids here want to go. Notre Dame doesn't have that. What they had for so many years was brand. They were on NBC. They had won championships, four horsemen, all that sort of stuff. Touchdown Jesus. Newt Rockney, none of that matters anymore. An 18-year-old high school senior right now has no concept of Notre Dame being nationally relevant in football. No concept whatsoever. That's the, that is what Notre Dame is fighting against. And until, whoever the coach is, if it's Brian Kelly or Marcus Freeman or whoever, until Notre Dame is willing to remove its glass ceiling, until Notre Dame is willing to say, you know what, coach? We got really strict academic restrictions here. Um, and this prospect normally wouldn't get into school here. But because they run 4 3 and have a 38 inch vertical, we're, we're going to make an exception and let this, this kid in because we know it's going to help you on your football team. Until Notre Dame is willing to do that, they will never win because the problem is, yes, you can get really good players. Look, Jaden Osbury is a fantastic football player right here at U High. He's going up to South Bend. Absolutely. You can get really good football players that go. You can't get 85 of them every single year. That's the problem Notre Dame has. And that's the problem it will continue to have until it decides it doesn't want to have that problem anymore. The issue that Brian Kelly had at Notre Dame was a, was a Notre Dame problem. And it will always be that. And back to the point I was making initially with the guy from my Irish Breakdown that he doesn't understand. Notre Dame fans largely can't see the forest through the trees. When you live in that culture and you think what you have is the greatest thing in the country, it's so hard to pull back, take the 10,000-foot view, and realize actually what we have here as an inhibited inhibitor. Because you and I live here in the South, and every single football Saturday, we see Baton Rouge and Tuscaloosa and Athens, Georgia and Gainesville, Florida, and now College Station, and you see people that care so rapidly that they're willing to give up things like state funding to build great facilities and all this crazy stuff that goes associated with it, where the governor has the football coach and the team to the governor's mansion this week for dinner. Like, that's what it's like here They don't understand that, which is why whenever they run up against Clemson or Alabama or LSU or even Ohio State, they can't compete. Guess what's going to happen week one when Marcus Freeman takes Notre Dame to the horseshoe? What are they, Muse, what are they, a 19-point underdog? What's the line? 
I didn't know if you knew it off the top. Whatever, they're they're a three score underdog. There, Marcus Freeman is going to go take that team to the horseshoe and get his ass kicked. And I'm curious if Brian Driscoll thinks that's because Brian Kelly didn't recruit the horses, or because Marcus because they have talent, right? They have talent. Brian Kelly wasn't a good big game coach. He couldn't maximize that talent, get production in big games. So, what what are we going to say about Marcus Freeman? When they go get their ass kicked week one in the horseshoe by Ohio State. And C.J. Stroud throws for 400 yards. And Jackson Smith and Jeba and Marvin Harrison Jr. Go, go bonkers and wild. Is it because Brian Kelly just left the cupboard bare? Or, or, or is, it because, is it because Marcus Freeman's not a big game coach? It's because your roster don't look like theirs. Yeah, your roster's good enough to beat Michigan State and to beat Purdue and to beat Navy and to beat USC when they're bad and and to have really fine seasons. But but to be in the upper crust, like the top six programs in the country that every stinking year are right there. You know them. Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, Oklahoma, even though they get their head kicked in in the playoff now every year. LSU when they've been there. Like you ha- your your roster has to look a certain way. And it can never look that way at Notre Dame until they're willing to remove their self-imposed glass ceiling. But they're not willing to do that because they think the thing they have is perfect. And if that's your mentality, great, awesome. Keep being a great academic institution, graduate successful people, become difference makers in, re- in the world, but stop thinking you're ever going to be a championship contender in football because in the reality in which we all live now, that will never happen at that school Not with Marcus Freeman, not with Jesus Christ himself coming off of the Hesburgh Library and from his touchdown arms into Notre Dame Stadium to coach that team. It'll never happen. It'll never happen until they have the horses. And they don't have the horses because they won't allow them into that school. That's the problem Notre Dame has. That's not a Brian Kelly problem. That's a Notre Dame problem. What Brian Kelly has here and will continue to have is every resource he needs imaginable. Every facility, every coach, every buffet line, whatever you need, whatever you need to win at the highest level, you will have at LSU. That's why he's here. So I know a lot of people went bonkers on that guy yesterday. And it's not it's not him. He's just one of many voices that that sing the same song and have while that school has failed to win a national title for 34 years. And it's going to be 35 and 36, and 37, and on and on and on and on until they fix themselves. And that's nothing Marcus Freeman's going to be able to do. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.